I'm just throwing this together because there's something that's been going through my mind for a long time, and that's the, the disdain of sports games. Um, when I think of video games, one of the first games I think of is Pong, the original tennis game. And I think about sports I played in my youth and in general, about, you know, sports as games. They're just physically active games and how video games, <clears throat> video games can represent those type of physical competitions. Um, so sports were always a part of my youth as, as team activities and other things like individual sports like skiing and such. So I naturally gravitated towards them in video games and on the TV and media. And to those who don't follow sports, it's one of the major drivers of live television. And um, I know local events, they spend a lot of money and invest a lot in local sporting events. So it's, it's a big part of our society, but it's often seen as kind of like this other world in the gaming universe. But to me, it's definitely a integral part of it. Um, so one of the games I wanted to talk about was Sports Friends and how this is a game that is, is not a typical sport. It's more like a, it's kind of borderline fantasy reality type of sport. So, um, but it also has elements that are very close to the real world. So, um, in this jousting type of game, you are kicking a ball to score a goal, um, but you have these long poles that you ride on. So this kind of pole, pole vaulting kicking game has elements of real sports in it, and it's still like a one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two competition, but um, there's other games where you're, it's more like a fighting game where you're still like trying to score balls and other teams' goals and such, and different players might have different abilities and strengths. Um, you know, these, these type of sport games are similar to real life sports games. So that, and then there's, this one is actually a motion-based game um, based on music where you're basically trying to cause somebody else to move, like hitting their hand or causing them to move their motion stick too fast, causing them to be disqualified from the game. And basically it's like a last person standing thing um, where you're trying not to have your, your motion wand go off by holding it very still, but causing somebody else to, to move theirs. So this, this game is, again, like from the outside, people see people playing this um, joust type of game. I think it's called Johann Sebastian Joust, this, this version. I can't remember exactly, but it's a music-based game. You'll see people like in this circle walking around with these, holding these sticks and trying to swat at each other and such. And it looks pretty weird and it doesn't seem like a real game, um, like a traditional game, but these are all parts of like competitive sports that to me are kind of closely tied to the more traditional sports that we celebrate, like the Olympics and professional sports on TV. Um, there's polar riders. And... So um, one of the earlier games like this um, is of course Duck Hunt, which was packed in the as a bonus with Super Mario Brothers on the NES. It came with a light gun and you would, but the light gun, the light gun shooting games which simulate hunting go way back, you know, before traditional video games to like um, carnival type games where you'd have sensors and you'd shoot like a light or a laser to try to score points. Um, so these type of sporting type of games that sort of emulate hunting go back, you know, before video games were even a thing. Um, so I wanted to talk a bit about the game I created, which is 
Hunting Man Championship, which is a sporting hunting game <laughs> that, unlike Duck Hunt, kind of, and I'm not going to play the audio, but it kind of, even though it has a 2D style with very cartoonish weapons, it kind of increases the realism with, with blood and corpses and um, the sound effects are kind of gruesome and such. Um, but it is a sport where you're graded based on, there's a certain time limit. Um, a lot of sports will have constraints like a time limit and a scoring system and, you know, set, sets of rules potentially if there are more competitive one-on-one -on -one type sports. So, um, and basically what I wanted to, one of people to consider when thinking about what games to play or what games to make is that games can be, um, they don't necessarily always have to be pure fantasy. They can be more, I think of sports games, maybe not this one quite as much. Uh, sports games are kind of like simulations of real life play. Um, so, but they're simulations that you can tweak you can see there's AI in this game because there it's not just a player versus player, but there's AI type of that runs away and moves at different speeds and such. So um, when you're thinking of making making a game, if if you're interested in sports games um, or even interested in playing them, there's a lot of you could think of it like a simulation that, um, where you can even sometimes allow the player to tweak the parameters, tweak the rules of the game to allow different outcomes. So for instance, a, a traditional game like basketball, you can disable the rules so you don't have to worry about penalties or you can alter the game speed. There's lots of options that modern games allow you to do that can lead to fun outcomes that go beyond just purely simulating um, a realistic version of the sport. But ultimately people come back to it, I think, for those type of games, they do come back to it for the realism aspect of having actual players perform like their real life counterparts, whether it's um, a wrestling game where their attributes are trying to be based on real life wrestlers and their strengths and weaknesses. Um, but to me, there's always been a blurry line between sports games and like wrestling games and the rest of, of the gaming world. So um, I think if you haven't tried sports games, you should give them a shot. If you thought, you know, there's lots of different types of sports out there. Um, if you want to try developing your own, um, I still feel like there's a lot of room for innovation. I know we've talked about copyright. A lot of the, the players and licenses and such are all trademarked and heavily controlled in terms of who can make them and publish them. But the sports themselves, in terms of uh, making a game based on a real sport or making a game based on a sport that you just create yourself. Um, there's still a lot of flexibility, um, especially if you want to make something that's a little bit beyond real, like from things like NBA Jam, where it's like a hyper version of the sport um, or people do superhuman things to things like, like this, where... Um, it really stretches the limits of how this could be a real real situation, but um, also I think sports games to me are always great for multiplayer. So if you're looking at creating a game where you want people to play together um, against each other, with each other, you might want to think of it in terms of a sport, maybe even a real life sport or trying it out in real life to see in the same way you might test a game using a board game, you might try 
a sports-based game based on a real sport or try it with people in real life before you make the video game version and, and see how it goes. So, yeah, I guess that's uh, my main thing. I, If you do want to play sports games sometime, let me know. I got a lot of them, <laughs> but... Um, um, yeah, I guess I would say think of them more as simu various degrees of simulations of the real world. And to some extent, they could almost become like a sandbox where you can change the rules, you can change the AI, you can change your attributes to create um, a variety of different e gaming experiences that go beyond um, pure simulation of a very specific sport. <laughs>